Welcome back to the lab. I've broken it. Yep, that thing there, it's in pieces. Let's have a look. I could put a um, space for rent sign just here. It's quite a lot. You'd get a small family in there. Actually, Auckland house prices, this this amount of space here, you get quite a lot of money for that. Um, I don't know, a couple hundred bucks a week, someone to pay, wouldn't they? So... The reason for um, that, sitting on the bench there, we, well, are we going to call that a bench? On the uh, <clears throat> specialised tooling, saw horses and planks, etc. Uh, the reason that's sitting on there is the um, the roundy, roundy, releasey, stoppy, goey thingy inside there. That's not doing what it's supposed to do anymore. So there's some sort of issue with the pressure plate partially um, dragging so you engage the clutch or disengage it whichever way you want to look at it push your pedal on the clutch um, to stop the car moving stop drive happening and have a look through the gaping great big hole that we've got there to get our drive shaft through there um, you can see as you turn the engine around slowly by hand that I don't know, 75% of the pressure plate is releasing the friction plate and everything's all good. And about, I don't know, 25% of it or 20% perhaps one puck on our five puck clutch. Let's have a look at that on the bench. This is this is an old one sitting here. So five puck, you can see that one will still be trying to drag a little bit, trying to hold on, whereas the others have released. And that's no good. Makes it hard to move the car around, hard to change gears and... There's something wrong with it and it lives behind my head and it goes 7,300 RPM and if it blows to pieces that's not going to be great. So I've just gone and got one of these fancy, thankfully it's, it's not pink like the like the boxes, one of these jobbies. There was one of those on the shelf in town so they've upgraded the centres, they're quite different to what they used to be. Um, there's comparison. So and these the springs are better retained than what they used to be so the chances of one failing coming out much less um, it's now six buttons pucks whatever uh, about the same size so whether that's more grip or less grip it's over to you to argue about it's less pressure on there and um, 2200 pound pressure plate should be heaps should be many heaps so what i've got to do at this point is get that all apart and swap all those bits and pieces in so um gives you a perspective of scale i suppose i have to come back quite a long way there's motor and box sitting there compared to car there's um quite a lot of it <laughs> it's it's quite a big unit um and you can see where things are sitting you know so as i've talked earlier about turbo positions being um a bit optimistic for their height above the crankcase so I mean they are at the bottom of the turbos are above the bottom of the crankshaft so mm, it's just getting a bit sketchy you know getting draining from there is not ideal we're getting away with it mostly it does build up some oil when it sits around too long if I have um, too high oil level although you wouldn't think the oil level is going to be as much as that but there you go so still um We'll get that done. I'll get this new clutch in here. I'll take the part. We'll have a look. All right. Box of cogs on the floor there. Um, that is actually a, I think it's D40 Navara pressure plate on there because it's quite a high clamping force but quite a low profile. That's, we used that to get it into the front wheel drive gearbox that we had at the time. Um, back when this was just rear wheel drive. Some people will be confused. About that but never mind so um if you're taking something apart to try a clutch taking it apart trying to figure out what's going on it's a good idea to put the clutch a lining tool in there to hold the friction plate while you pull it all to pieces just in case um there's something important that might be sitting there letting you know what's going on and um you just whip it apart and then all your info's gone right so you leave that there so that the friction plate doesn't fall on the floor when you undo the pressure plate so I'll do that now and see what I can find. Right, so that was a good call. Definitely a good call changing the clutch. So I've just undone 
those six and then that one so I started I did two on each side of the one because there's nine if you know what I mean and I'm not sure if I can see it now can you guys see that down in there the shiny thing just past the clutch alignment tool the shiny thing that should not be in there something went tinkle tinkle um, and a piece fell out magnet let's see what we've got in here that um, could have been very bad times for me if I'd just decided just to that that was coming out of our clutch pressure plate or friction plate or something that was that was inside there <laughs> yep yep so I made an assessment based on what was going on what I could see and how much time I had and how much money it was going to cost and what the risks would be if I didn't do anything and I'm glad I decided that getting in here and sorting this out would be sensible because Imagine that at 7,000 RPM and that found a way to get out of there. Um, bad things would happen, definitely. Okay, I'll take this off. Well, let's just leave the camera rolling. That'll This will be noisy. So cover your ears. It might, might not be too bad. Not a lot, a lot of load on it at this point. Alright, so... One one handed is not really the way to be doing these things, but um, I'm sure some of you are interested to see what's going on. Can I jiggle this off from here? Yeah. So much for not dropping the friction plate. Um, what do we got? Crackage. Yeah, a little bit of whatever it is has come off and hit that. Look, these, this was worn out anyway. This clutch was done. That one's hammered. Um, cracked. 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 It looks pretty good there. Where has this piece come from? Ah! Zada! Yeah, so it's dropped that piece that's behind my thumb. It's blown that to bits and chucked it out. Not the pressure plate's fault at all. Friction plate. And ironically, as I just showed you before, I've got one of those sitting on the bench, which I could potentially use. But never mind. We'll get in there. We'll get it sorted. I've got to assess whether this friction surface on my clutch, on my flywheel, is um, usable again does look like it might be a little bit warped which could be a big problem i'll have a look let you just know flywheel insert situation so took that off gave it a um adjustment so that it's now pretty good i'm not going to say it's perfect it's certainly not warped as bad as what it was we were getting away with it before so now it's significantly better um yeah you shouldn't really bend hardened steel um you can cause cracks and stuff nah it wasn't bent that far that that's going to be an issue at all in my opinion so i've measured all these um they look really bad on camera and you can feel them by hand the 0.3 of a millimeter which is an amount you know it's not insignificant but it's not huge and a real big problem so what i'm going to do is get that all screwed back down again i've actually pressed these out ever so slightly compared to the bits in the middle in between so it will actually push that down nice and hard onto the flywheel and clamp it with the, the bolts and keep it pretty good i've got a fitting that goes in the lathe you bolt the flywheel up clock it up and I've got a nice awesome hard tool to give that a skim just to get it a little bit closer I'm not going to get carried away and take everything off it I'll just take 0.2 out of it or something like that and take 0.2 off this face here and then um, 
which should be pretty good. It's not perfect, it's not what I would recommend. Obviously you'd get a new insert or a new flywheel. We don't really have time on our side. It's it's getting on to four o'clock on Friday of Easter weekend. So, you know, if I wait till, it would be probably Wednesday before I would have that insert and everything. And then I'd have to put all this back together. Um, and there's not much time to do that. And if something goes wrong, we're screwed. So I'll get on with this, get this done today. Clean this up, bolt it back onto there. I didn't die, so that's all right. Some people won't be happy with that. <laughs> anyway, so about 0.2 of a millimeter, I think, came off here. Maybe even less. I've left um, the hardness there that's on some areas. I've just left it. That's fine. Um, it'll be the first time the car get, gets used anyway. Um, and just took about the same amount, maybe a tiny bit more off this face here. Just to ensure that the diaphragm and everything's all operating within tolerances. So that's that. That's pretty good. Be happy with that. Um, I might put a flappy disc on the angle grinder and just give that a was as it goes around just to take the last little bits off there make it a bit shinier it's not bad i suppose that's hard to see yeah it's not bad i mean the clutch is gonna wear in pretty quickly probably by the time it's on the trailer it's gonna be better than so that'll be all right it's on it's talked Good progress. That's um, that's it for today. I'll put that somewhere else. Oh, actually, let's put that on, eh? Can we zoom in while we're here? Whoa, zoom, zoom. Not the Coca-Cola. Put that in my tummy. We'll put this on in a second. Wow, that's shaky. Hmm. Yeah, I wasn't going to, but it pays to check. So um, I've got this shaft that's from a box that I took apart, so I can check the. Pilot bush. Uh, yeah, I think I'll change that. If you thought the um, throw up bearing might have been a bit shagged, yeah, yeah. So smash that in there like that. I've got a press in the room, but you guys don't. Find a socket that fits. That one doesn't, and then just hit it with the hammer, and out it comes. And then the other one just. Carefully press it on. You can't. Um, I'm wandering around while I'm looking for something. The other hand, I can't find the right socket. It must be time to go inside. Oh, here we go. That'll do. Hey, should we do that? Should we give it a hit? Is that hammer big enough? I think it is time to go inside. Loud noise. Didn't even drop everything on the floor. Look how, look how easy that was. And um, you just put your new bearing on there. You give that a tidy up, of course. Give it all a clean. Okay, I think I said we're done like five times now already. But now we are actually done. And there's something I figured out. Just because this is all a conglomeration of bits and pieces stuck together that are not supposed to be. That's a... Um, Automatic bell housing, cut, spliced onto a diesel bell housing, and that's a washer. We don't have that washer in the car anymore. I thought it was going to fall on the floor, but we need the torch to show you why that's gone. That is, that's a big motor <laughs> for a little car, a big assembly. Uh, if Garrett's watching, I need um, a couple of GTX 2860s, please, would be great. We're pushing these further than what they should be going. Um, anyway, inside here, let's get... Oh, we're making everything all glary and reflecty. See the ball on the clutch lever there? That's the pivot ball. Yep, smart people have figured it out already. 
with um, with that washer in behind that pivot ball that touched on the back of the pressure plate on the on the clutch it's no good without it there's actually um, it actually sits a bit further back there's enough you know that's that's not going to move sorry if I come in through there is that that's better that's not going to move that far when it's running so that will be fine it's going to have clearance and um, it's not going to get closer it's not going to get further away as things wear out because neither of those parts move in relation to wear so this is a bit yucky isn't it that's um that's how close our drive shaft runs through there all this has had to have been hacked away to allow for the drive shaft to go through there to have a two-piece drive shaft instead of a three-piece because our diff the head of the diff literally sits about where the oil filter is at the moment that's not where it lives normally right so uh, and then that shaft runs through here and through to a hanger bearing that's mounted on that bracket there um, so that's why that's like that anyway i'm done it's it's seven o'clock and um i need to go inside and i'll just quickly edit this and i'll smash it up for you so you'll have it easter friday look at this look at the size of that looks weird with the um turbines on what is effectively the front of the motor array eh? but never mind all right there's our bell uh transfer box everyone keeps asking about that's it there so there's a pinion gear in the bottom the spur gear in the top that's it simple as that changes direction changes ratio it's beautiful right cheers bye